computer. Yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. I really do. And um, yeah, before we get into, I guess, more of the recent uh, fundamentals and um, and the sentiment analysis, as well as uh, some questions on trailing stops, um, I just wanted to really kind of cover um, really the, the fundamental risk sentiment analysis mindset and what you always need to keep in mind when um, having the approach that we do when it comes to uh, our um, uh, our uh, approach to combining fundamentals risk sentiment and technical analysis, right? So, you know, really the, I'll try and do this as, uh, as uh, succinctly as possible. I won't drag this out for too long, but... Um, Really, from a fundamental and risk sentiment analysis mindset, think in terms of probabilities and uh, possibilities, yeah? Not in absolutes. Think about what's probable or likely to happen and typical, typically and usually happens, right? Because um, if we think very uh, binary or in absolutes, um, it, the, you know, that life isn't like that and the markets are not like that. Nothing is exact. So we have to think in terms of what is likely to happen. And as long as you have or you feel that you have certain odds in your favor, yeah, when it comes to fundamental analysis, right? So if we know that typically, for example, when an interest, a, a central bank looks to hike rates and another central bank looks to cut rates or hold rates, you've got a bit of a divergence there, right? Now, what is likely to happen in that scenario the, the scenario is, uh, you know, uh, forgetting what price does in really the short term, and I'll get on to short term price, but over the, you know, medium to long term, what is likely to happen is, is that the central bank that is on the hiking cycle generally will, that currency will appreciate versus a currency that is, you know, potentially holding or even, you know, cutting rates, right? So does that mean that price is going to go up every single day or even every single week or even every single month in that interest rate hiking cycle. No, it's impossible. It just can't do that, right? For, you know, for liquidity reasons and, uh, and, and the like. So we have to have more of a longer term, you know, uh, medium to longer term uh, perspective. And I guess I'll get into that in a sec, right? But just think about, always think about what is probable, what is possible, we have to think, again, in terms of how many, again, this is what is known as confluence. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see my pen tool. Can you see my pen tool at the moment? Can you see that? Yeah. All right. Brilliant. So just think in terms of, you know, pros and cons, right? Pros and cons. What are the pros of buying the US dollar? Yeah. Pros, cons. Yeah. And then just really, you know, think about it. GDP, excellent. They're growing. Um, inflation, is it above their 2% target? Yep. It's something that the central bank has to end up, you know, hiking rates. You know, are they affected by, for example, um, uh, how effective will they be um, by the by the Ukrainian war, for example? Um, you know, is that going to be a potential uh, con, right? We don't know. But at the end of the day, or is it maybe something that you might you might not know, right? But the point is, is that as long as you've got more, um, you know, ticks and crosses and checks in, in, in the pros column versus the cons column, that is how we, you know, in a very simplistic way is, is look at really the balance of probabilities. That's all we can do. Yeah. So think about what's probable, what's likely and what typically happens and what usually happens under certain circumstances. Of course, we have to go a bit deeper, but um, but that is really the, the, the baseline. Next is really time reveals all, right? So the emphasis on short-term price um, really should be given to market illiquidity. So there's many times where, for example, you might want to be long on a, on a currency pair, but yet price, you know, in the short term hasn't done what it is that you expect it to do, right? Again, nobody knows, no one has a clue where price is exactly going to reverse from. Yes, we look at technical patterns, supply and demand, stop hunts and the like, but no one knows the exact level, right? And so we're just dealing in terms of probabilities. Now, when it comes to short-term price action, we have to understand that the market is an auction, right? And it's an auction for, um, 
for financial institutions, um, you know, to, to do to do business, right? To buy and sell at certain prices. So, um, you know, whether you want to call it the accumulation phase, whether you want to accumulate or distribute, really the accurate, um, uh, you know, uh, description, I guess, um, is basically the market is an auction. So in the short term, the the financial institutions are really you know and i say short term meaning over the course of maybe days weeks and even months right could be short term if you know we're thinking in terms of maybe a year or two yeah and if prices as we know are going what some people would say is a choppy market a sideways a ranging market is not such it shouldn't be described as that it should be really described as an an auction right between you know, sellers and buyers. That's all this is. Now, this this range might represent, you know, um, I don't know, on a, on a lower time frame, it might represent, uh, you know, 50 pips. On a daily time frame, it might represent 300 pips. Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows to the extent of the value, yeah, of where, you know, traders are generally buying and selling. If we understand that in the future, potentially prices should be five, six, seven hundred pips higher, right? So it gives a chance to the financial institutions who understand and are more forward thinking and future thinking that they want to be buying and accumulating, right? Auctioning, yeah, the buyers, yeah. And again, they're taking profit up here as well, taking certain partial profits. But if you understand that over a certain time, and again, that might be, you know, the space of a week, it might be even the space of a month or, or, or two. But Ultimately, if we're looking at price, we have to understand in the short term, yeah, that, um, that you know, price is more driven by illiquidity, the accumulation of orders, the fact that market makers have to provide um, liquidity to the financial institutions and they both have to make money, right? There's an agreement there. The market is not for, is secondary, is for speculation, yeah, as far as us speculating on what price is going to do. Um but you have to understand this in the short term, that's what the market is. But in the medium to long term, right? So looking at fundamentals, you know, they generally will play themselves out. Yeah. So time reveals all. In the end, in the short term, um, well, actually not really in the short term, but in the long term, time reveals all, right? So fundamental analysis is about understanding what the value is currently or potentially the, you know, the auction is right now compared to maybe you know three four five six months from now you know if you know the, the federal reserve are looking to high crates what should be the future value and continue to high crates you know this year what should be the future value of the dollar do you think it's going to be higher or lower should be higher right how it gets there all we're looking for is pullbacks that's it now we have to look at you know fundamentals from a medium to long term uh, time horizon and you know we are looking to buy and stay ahead of the curve right by buying the rumor and that's what fundamentals is ultimately about yeah it's not about scalping it's not about you know you know um you know scalping for maybe you know 10 pips 20 pips 30 pips if you understand yes obviously we do make short-term gains as well because you know if you're entering into multiple positions then you know you want to take you know some profits on the in the short term but generally you want to leave a position or two you know to, to swing trade right and that's really where the money is made on those big moves if you can capture them and stay in for you know the trend long enough but the point I'm trying to make is, is that we're trying to buy the rumor, right? Buy the rumor, sell the fact. And, you know, there is no rumor if you're just looking solely at price. You know, you can't decide what the rumor is from, from, from price action. Yeah, you have to decide what the rumor is from what the central banks are doing, because they, those are the, um, and, and the financial institutions, because those are the guys that are determining what the value is going to be in the in the medium to long term. And even in the, even in the short term, they're deciding what 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 price is. Now, you, we have to be thought more forward thinking. So stop, you know, focusing so much on short term price action. Yeah. And focus more on where prices are likely to be. That's what investing is all about. Right. Investments. You know, if you invest in property, you're thinking more long term. If you're investing in a business, you're thinking about more long term. That's where we need to have our mindset. 
um, when we're when we're you know implementing fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis, and there are always going to be pullbacks on a in, in a risk on environment and pullbacks in a risk off environment. Yeah, that's just the, the nature of price. Yeah, so we're in more of a risk off environment if we're looking at risk as a scale, whereas you know this is neutral and this is you know maybe more off, for example, and this is more on. Yeah. Where are we on the scale potentially? Yeah, probably somewhere around here, I would say. Whereas off is the, the you know the extreme, an extreme off would be considered you know um, uh, COVID um, nineteen lockdowns in twenty twenty. That was really the extreme risk off. Nothing like that had happened you know in our lifetimes. So from that perspective, you know maybe a world war might be you know considered an extreme event too, but. Um, you know, maybe a regional war, a local war might not be that extreme or as extreme as something like a world war or a total, you know, uh, economic uh, lockdown. But the point I'm trying to make is this, sorry, is that there, are, regardless of what environment you're in, whether you're an extreme on or extreme off, you're always going to have pullbacks in an uptrend. Yeah. Or what would be known as an uptrend or a downtrend, right? You're always going to have pullback so don't just because you're we're in a risk off environment you know you can make the judgment call whether you want to trade you know risk off sentiment right that's up to you right um so again you don't need to um you know uh, always think that the you know the you're going to miss out on a trade for example you know just because the market is going without you yeah and to the downside there are going to be pullbacks Right. Just as though just as there are pullbacks in an uptrend. So. That's, you know, what we need to consider and a pullback can lead to a reversal. Right. Nobody knows. Let's say, for example, we're in a risk off environment. And let me just go back a little bit. Right. We're in a risk off environment, which we are. And recently, you know, I know a few of you guys have, have bought the euro and have done well. Right. On the on the, you know, euro yen, for example, I think somebody might have bought the euro Swiss I saw. Um, I'm waiting for a buy on that Euro Swiss at some point. Um, and even the commodity currencies. Oh, was it you, Alexandros? Yeah, I thought I read, read it. Um, but the point is, is that let's say, for example, we're in a risk off and Alexandros has, you know, bought a setup around here. Let's say, for example, managed to pick off the lows. And, you know, most people would say, oh, well, you know, we're in a downtrend. So why are you going lock? Why are you going, you know, why are you buying here? But obviously we understand we're buying the rumor selling the fact. Prices being driven, you know, by sentiment and uh, and fundamentals and value, and nobody knows whether you know because Alexandros might have bought on a Monday, for example. No one knows, for example, on a Friday whether there might be an agreement, yeah, between the Ukraine and the Russians, yeah, due to a ceasefire. Right? There could be a ceasefire. There could be an agreement. That pullback could turn into, in fact, a great buying opportunity. The thing is, nobody knows, but. If it doesn't turn into a in, into that, don't get you know, don't start to think that fundamentals don't work or risk sentiment doesn't work. It's just a case of you understanding that there are going to be pullbacks. A pullback doesn't mean it's going to be a reversal for sure. Yeah, all we do is we manage our trades. We might take some profit, leave a little bit on, you know, partial partial position on, um, you know, get ourselves to maybe break even or a small profit, and then see what happens. Right, that's ultimately what we're trying to do and i always say that risk sentiment pushes prices or can push prices to where you want to be you know a buyer now the timing of that is is how we is the reason why we use our technical analysis you know we're not necessarily always trying to pick the absolute lows if we do brilliant if we don't doesn't matter right because if we if we get this trade idea right you might lose a couple of trades one or two trades trying to get in long but let's say for example you do get in long and then we see prices you know do reverse and the uh, fundamentals do come into play the sentiment dissipates then you should really want to go for you know as, try to make as much as you can on the move to the upside right Exactly. And always risk a small amount, 0.5. I would even say smaller than that if you if you can. Right. But just understand that there's always going to be pullbacks in a risk off environment. And there's going to be risk um, pullbacks in a risk just like there are pullbacks in a risk on environment. So don't start FOMOing to the downside or to the upside because, you know, you think that price is just going to keep tanking and tanking and tanking. No, 
you know it doesn't doesn't happen like that so there are always going to be opportunities um um yeah so fundamental relationships can change over time and 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 i think the example that i really wanted to um to to i guess look at um because what what we what generally a general overview and i've mentioned this before a general overview of fundamentals is and again we have to deal in terms of this is going back to think in terms of what's probable like i would say likely usually and typical yeah but we there's there's a bit more that needs to go into it because everybody knows right or everyone should understand you know you can look this up on google generally you know that swiss franc and the japanese yen are generally seen as safe haven currencies um and tem generally tend to strengthen in a risk um you know off environment right but you but again you can't just take that as 100 gospel yes we understand what's likely what's typical what's usual what's probable to happen but but we can't just take that for granted there still has to be a level of because you know thinking because not every single scenario is the same so and fundamental relationships do change over time yeah so from a safe haven asset perspective yeah the euro wasn't really seen as a safe haven currency or it wasn't typically seen as a safe haven currency but over the past year or so i've seen um you know articles that have you know gone into why the euro may start to become a safe haven currency right and this was a uh, by the way this is in the 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 um this is in the safe so safe haven the risk off um sentiment um channel by the way in the discord group there's a there's a there's a paper study so you can read this whole paper and i, I really advise you do read it um and basically it talks about uh by by vesela uh todovo todorova um and it talks about three major safe haven currencies are the dollar um the japanese yen and the swiss franc yeah and it says the euro is now in competition as an alternative safe haven currency right and this was written i think this was published anyway in 2020 right so economic alternative safe haven currencies and um you know the academic policy and policy interest in safe haze safe assets is rising the for the phenomenon safe haven is generally regarded as an investment that markets hope to retain or increase in value during turbulent times right so it goes through the reasons why historically and currently why um, you know, the, the the safe havens are the safe havens and why, you know, the market considers them safe havens, but also the fact that the euro is now becoming or now in, in, in competition as an alternative safe haven currency. Yeah. So things do change over time and you have to be aware of those things. The relationships change, the world changes. The only constant in life is change. So from that perspective, you need to keep your finger on the pulse and not just take it for granted. How people traded 20 years ago, uh, fundamentals, yes, are generally the same as far as, you know, interest rates, you know, generally mean, you know, uh, an appreciating currency cuts mean a depreciating currency, right? But when it comes to certain relationships um, and risk sentiment, things do change. And again, you know, just to cover that and finally, I guess, nuances matter, yeah? So not every risk environment and risk event, yeah, is the same because we have intermarket analysis and geographic considerations. Intermarket analysis is basically the study of um, how different markets are in interconnected, right? And so we all know the example of Australia and China being um, trade partners and um, Australia being um, China's biggest um, trade porter, um, uh, uh, a trade relationship, I guess, because they because Australia export a lot of um, commodities to China, right? They're the biggest buyer, and because geographically, where Australia is, where China is, it makes sense, right? They're in that region. So whenever, if China starts to slow down, who is it going to affect the most? It's going to affect everybody, but more acutely, it's going to affect, you know, um, you know, not only Australia because. Of the fact that they're you know uh, uh, one of their biggest importers and exporters um and trade partners but also just geographically right so certain risk events that might happen in australia might affect china and vice versa but will it will it really affect um canada for example 
Yeah. Will it really affect the UK or Europe? So not every single risk event is the same. And um, and uh, Sam found this um, found this diagram recently, which is which is absolutely brilliant. And I um, don't know if any of you had seen this, but um, I did post this. Uh, I think it was from ING, not this p- particular thing, but ING. If you guys had watched the weekend fundamental analysis video I did in the group and uh, also I published one on YouTube. But I basically said in it that and I showed the studies. That. You know the, the the Ukraine and Russia uh, war. Um, yes, it's a risk off event, but everyone's wondering why the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar isn't really being affected as much, right? Or why the New Zealand dollar and the and the um, Australian dollar is going higher against typical safe haven currencies. And this is really because of again the nuances, right? Geographically, where is the war and who's going to be the most affected? So what? you know, this chart is basically saying is that the distance from uh, Kiev in Mars versus currency performance since the 24th of February. So the distance in miles, right, miles away from Kiev, you've got the New Zealand dollar and the um, and the Australian dollar, yeah, the, f- the furthest away, but they're doing, they are doing the best, right? You've got, you know, um, the UK somewhere around here, you know, they're not doing so well. You've got, you know, uh, Canada and Japan somewhere around here but also as well Japan yes have, have, have strengthened from a safe haven perspective but also as well not against all currencies right so again this is this is what comes down to pair selection you can't just start randomly just trading you know um, certain pairs um, if you don't understand the nuances of why you're trading those pairs and what the risk impact um, you know, is on those economies, which then affects the, the the currency. Does everyone, you know, understand that? Yeah. 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 And don't worry if you're confused or you're thinking, well, how do we know? How do we know? It's, you know, it's, it, it, this will come with experience, right? And sometimes again, when you're not too sure, sit on your hands until things do become clear, right? This wasn't clear at the outset. This 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 trade idea was definitely not clear at the absolute outset. But what happens is if you keep your finger on the pulse, if you keep reading the fundamentals, we'll get what the banks are saying. We read our bank analysis reports from Citibank, from ING, from Mizuho, from MUFG, et cetera. And those guys will let you know, you know, the analysis. They will let you know what they're thinking and they will display it you know, um, and we'll find it, right? So this is what we'll do. It's not, the, the, the aim is not to capture every single pip of the move, yeah? If we could, if, if there's a, if there's a, a, a 1,000 pip move, if you capture 300 pips of that, brilliant. You know what I mean? That's excellent. You know, it's, it, it's not, our, our goal is not to try to pick the lows and, and, and take profit at that absolute highest. What our goal is, is to ride the wave at some point. Some ideas you're getting earlier than others, but the thing is, is identifying those trade ideas. And you'll only identify those trade ideas if you understand fundamental analysis. Anyways, guys, I think that will probably bring me to the uh, to the end of the presentation. Just and I'll, I'll take to, you know, any questions before I do move on to uh, our, our you know group call and look look at what's going on uh, currently but any any um any comments or any um any uh, any questions that you want to you guys want to make yeah no all good alexandros everyone else is good all right brilliant brilliant so keep this in mind guys keep this in mind keep this in mind yeah when when you're applying this to to, to situations anyways all good, all good. No worries, Spank. Um, so, uh, group call, 9th of March. Is the 9th of March today? I keep forgetting my days, yeah. 9th of March, right? Somebody, I think it might have been, he's not here today, unfortunately, can't make it, but um, uh, it was, who was it again? I can't remember who it was. I can't remember the name. I can't remember who it was. Someone was asking about, um, about trailing stops, right? Now, trailing stops... And basically what time frame. Now, what you have to do, or what you should do is really, you know, this is in the uh, the, 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 the course, is trail 